you are Australia's first ever master chef. Master chef has literally changed my life in a deep and profound way. It's where it all began. All of this, all of this crazy ride. All because of Master Chef. So, walking through the doors of the kitchen will feel a little bit like coming home. I'm a competitive person, so I want it pretty badly. I'm sure everybody else in the room is going to feel the same way, so bring it on. I am the cook I am today because of MasterChef. My life did a complete 180 degrees from a prison officer into running restaurants. And now we are going global. MasterChef has brought me a lot of success but I need to know whether I'm still worthy of what I've achieved so far. Since winning MasterChef, I had the greatest experience working under Heston at the Fat Duck, but I've had a bit of a break from cooking for a while. I had a little baby. The last year has been amazing, but I've been wondering what was sort of missing. It was cooking. It's definitely my calling. So I'm ready to get back into the kitchen. Master Chef has produced some of the biggest names in food, and they're coming back. We're putting them head to head with 12 of the best home cooks in the country. For the first time ever, it's fans versus favorites. Welcome to MasterChef! Thousands of talented cooks applied and undertook our most rigorous of auditions yet. Layer those flavors. I don't think there's anything I want to do more than bring you three plate a dish that is just like perfect. And the result? the most talented team of fans that we've ever found. If that's just the beginning, I can't wait to see what's next. That's a shock. Be really happy. That was a great call. Well, well done. These fans have been watching season after season of MasterChef, and now it's their time. I've always been a massive fan of MasterChef, and I've always wanted to apply it, but... I feel like now's the right time. I've always had this cooking passion inside me. You only really ever get one crack at life. So if you're not taking risks and you're not having fun, then what's the point? As a fan, I have studied the competition and it introduced me to a completely different world. When I watch MasterChef, I want to be there. I want to be the one getting challenged Give me that pressure test. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, sick. That's so sick. <laughs> what you all been waiting for, guys? Yeah. Oh, the M, though. I've always oh, wanted to see the M. Going up against the favourites is intimidating. They're the gods of the MasterChef kitchen. And so. I've got to give it everything I have. Oh, can you hear that? I can yeah. hear it. I can hear excitement. Here we go, everybody. <laughs> Some fresh faces. You to amp everyone up. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How incredible is this? Pinch yourselves. You're not dreaming. You are here. Welcome to the MasterChef Kitchen. Yeah. Look at 
look around you. You are the best home cooks in the country today. <laughs> You've been fans of this show for years, watching, waiting for your chance to become Australia's next MasterChef. You've dreamed of holding up that trophy. Surrounded by the confetti gun, celebrating. And now, that time has arrived. So let that sink in. Hey, mate, there is some serious motion <laughs> coming from you. <laughs> like, there's, I think there's a couple of tears. It feels like there's a dance in there somewhere. Like, tell me what is going through your mind. Oh, my God. I'm feeling, oh, my God, so many emotions. It's overwhelming, isn't it, walking it's in this really place? It's really overwhelming. I can't even talk to you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you want to cry? Oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome back. Not your first time in this room. No. You almost made it last year. You were so close. Yep. How are you feeling? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, top 12, I think we're calling it. Uh, <laughs> uh, for now. For, for about now. For now. Three minutes. That's OK. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, fans. We can see you eyeing off these beautiful, crisp white aprons. Wearing one of these means that you belong in this kitchen. So let's do it. First up, Daniel. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Nice one, mate. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers. Getting the MasterChef apron, it's like, wow, this is unbelievable. This old thing. <laughs> I feel like I've just been named for first grade rugby or something, and they've just handed me the jersey. Righto, Harry, come and grab this shiny white thing. Come on down! I love being a part of a team, and it's so great seeing everyone get their aprons. Montana! We're here to really take on the favourites, and we're up for the challenge. That is more like it, huh? You actually look legit now. Welcome. But. Now it's time to see who you're really up against. These guys are fierce competitors and they are some of the biggest names that this competition has ever produced. First up, it's season six's Sarah and season two's Alvin. I'm Alvin, I'm from Season 2 MasterChef Australia, and I was the fifth runner-up. It's been 12 years since my season, and I would be most remembered for my drunken chicken, which was quite a phenomenon. There was a national shortage of one of the key ingredients, uh, which is Shaoxing wine. So folks, buy your Shaoxing wine now before it's sold out. Oh, this feels very strange, <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> We can't change our minds now. <laughs> I can't believe these are people I grew up watching on TV. And I'm going to be cooking against them. How are you? Hi. 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 <laughs> Sarah's so gorgeous. <laughs> it's a crime to be that pretty. Next up, from last season, we've got Tommy and Manoli. Yeah! Tommy and Manoli just came off last season. They're gonna be so sharp. They're ready to go. Oh, hey. Manoli's cooking just, I could smell it through my TV. It just looks amazing. And Tommy celebrates Vietnamese cuisine, and that's my heritage. So he is an inspiration. And it's from season 10, we've got Aldo. And season seven, we've got John. <laughs> It's been four years that I've been in this kitchen. Wow. And people that will remember me for my passion to be Italiano. Today I'm making my nonna's meatballs. Cook Italian, the things that are not best. Yes, baby. Come along all together, sweetie. 
get out and talk to you food, right? Hey, mate. That's great. Hi, mate. Ciao, Josh. Yeah. The judges, they look great, actually. I'm so thrilled to work with them, but there is just one thing. They look slightly skinny. So my job this time around is to firm them up. Yes. <laughs> Next up, a fan favourite of my own, and I reckon the most talented cook in season four, Mindy! These two were that close to picking up that thing. And they are back for the win this season. We've got from season three, Michael, and from season five, Christina. This is crazy. Okay. Oh my God, I actually have my dish. People might remember me as Christina, the rockabilly chick. Anyone feel like some dessert? <laughs> With the bow in her hair. It is surreal walking back into this kitchen. I'm really excited to make more memories. I'm excited to meet like, all the favourites. I'm kind of fangirling a little. And I'm excited to meet the fans and to make new friendships with them as well. And I get to cook again, like here. It's so cool. Last, but definitely not least, direct from the MasterChef Hall of Fame, Winners of one, seven, and ten, we've got Billy, Sashi, and Julie Goodwin! Yeah! We're screwed. This is huge. It's so huge. Sashi is just an absolute powerhouse. Billy just exemplifies what MasterChef can do to somebody, going from humble beginnings and then working at the Fat Dark. And Julie is just... She's the reason why we're all here. How are we all feeling now? Welcome and welcome back. <laughs> Sarah, you have been busy since the second you left this kitchen. Books, restaurants, TV shows. What's drawn you back to the MasterChef kitchen? I think, you know, this experience is so incredible and I can't praise it enough. It gave me such a huge opportunity and I did. I hit the ground running. You guys will do the same. And it, it's amazing and it draws you back. Sashi. Mate, yes. you have lifted that trophy above your head. You've got a restaurant now. You've done so many things. Why are you here, brother? Uh, this two years has been crazy for yeah. all of us. I think coming back into this competition is revalidating myself again as a cook. Mm -hmm. And I would like to have that adrenaline pumping again in the There's kitchen. Nothing I like miss it, that. There I is miss nothing that. like it. Yes. Julie. <laughs> the original MasterChef winner over a decade ago. We are so excited and grateful that you're back in the MasterChef kitchen. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm breaking it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's breaking it that you're here. <laughs> Even we're breaking it that you're here. So I'm glad that you're breaking it. Tell me more about that. <laughs> uh, I'm like fizzy with excitement. It's um, my guts are doing strange things, and um, I'm just I'm so grateful, so grateful to be back here. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. I'm on quite a high. And like you know what this place can do to you. Oh yeah. I'd absolutely say that it's not about what you know now. It's about what you're willing to take on board from the judges and from your fellow contestants. It's about what you're willing to try, how you're willing to grow. It's really what you know now is a small part of what is going to be important in the coming weeks. 
On behalf of the three of us and Australia and viewers all over the world, thank you for coming back into this kitchen and we cannot wait to see what you do. Thank you. Now that we're all together, MasterChef is filmed right here in the lands of the Wurundjeri people. And I, we, wish to acknowledge them as the traditional owners of this land. We'd like to pay our respects to the elders past and present, and extend that respect to all First Nations people present here today. With that said, let me officially welcome you to MasterChef Fans versus favourites. For the first time ever in MasterChef history, you will be competing in teams. This is the ultimate David versus Goliath battle. 12 of Australia's best home cooks versus 12 beloved favourites. Oh my God. That's you. <laughs> but only one of you will lift that trophy, take home a quarter of a million dollars, and be crowned Australia's Master Chef for 2022. Shall we just get straight into it? Yes. Yes. You want to hear what today's challenge is? Let's go. Today, we want to see each of you at your absolute best. So you'll be cooking a dish that represents your strengths. Show us what you bring to the table. What makes you an asset to your team? The best dish from each team today will win one of these. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> but that's not all. There aren't just two of these pins up for grabs today. There are three. What? There's one pin for the best dish in each team and another pin for the next best dish, whether or not that be fan or favourite. All right, fans' favourites, here's the rules. Your dish can be anything sweet or savoury. The pantry will be open, along with the beautiful MasterChef garden. You're gonna have 90 minutes to complete your dish. We ready? Yes! yes. yes. Good, because your time starts. No! <laughs> Thank you, Sashi. Running into the pantry for the first time in 12 years, I have forgotten what the adrenaline surge is like. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. It's a lot of people. And with 23 other contestants, it's like Boxing Day sale. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, oh. We having fun, Kane? We having fun? Yeah. <laughs> oh, squeeze through. Pick up my tapioca starch, pick up my rice flour, and I've got Sashi next to me. I've got Julie Goodwin next to me. And I've got Tommy. I mean, are you serious? This is a massive rush. Woo! Yes! yes. Mate, you got the booze out. I'm so excited. We'll get the caviar later and we'll have a party. I'm ready. Get the party started. How are you beeping? I haven't even done anything with you. Sashi, yes! Good to be back. Ah, I miss this, really. What are you cooking today, mate? Steamed fish with sambal and pimp it up to my style. <laughs> hey, I'm excited about that. Like. As a winner of MasterChef, walking back in <laughs> to our fans versus favourites, what are you most scared of? Going home a bit early. <laughs> <laughs> Going against fans, I can see in their eyes the hunger, the drive, the passion. And they know a lot about us, and we don't know anything about them yet. Oh, it's so good to have a sharp knife, man. I'm feeling unreal. I don't know how to explain it, to be honest. It's pretty crazy that I'm here doing this. Um... 
She's off to a good start. <laughs> G'day, everyone. How you going? My name's Daniel Lamble. I'm 27 years old, and I'm from Darwin, Northern Territory. I've been a firefighter for five years. I love my job. It's unbelievable. I love being able to serve the community. I love working in a team environment. I love the fact that you just don't know what you're going to get when you come into work every day. But I've always had this passion for cooking inside of me, and it's a huge part of my life. Being from Darwin, I love using ingredients and produce that are readily available to me. What I love most about cooking is that it is a creative outlet of mine. Oh, he's a good cook, can cook. Can't clean, but can cook. <laughs> <laughs> there's not much room in the job of a firefighter for creativity because there's only really few ways to put out a fire. <laughs> Daniel! G'day, Mel, how are you? Brunoise. Sorry? You're brunoising an onion. Do you know that that's what you're doing? Oh, no, not really. Okay, I just, I'm cool. dicing an onion. <laughs> you're very finely slicing an onion the French way, and that's oh. fantastic. Um, I just learned something. You <laughs> did. For your team, the fans' team, yeah. what strength are you bringing to the kitchen? Well, I'd like to think I uh, bring a level of wit and humour. Yep. But <laughs> no, I also um, write bold colours and flavours and that sort of thing. So, what are you making? I like to call them territory tacos. It's territory got a little bit of influence tacos. from a lot of their flavours up there. Okay. The influenced by a lot of Southeast Asian cuisine. Amazing. Um, essentially, it's a fish taco and a yep. kaffir lime uh, infused tempura mm. and a mango salsa. Wonderful. What sort of fish are you choosing Barra today? Barramundi, of course. It's terrible taco, it'd be really yeah, wouldn't it? Um, when I'm relaxing on a beach or fishing or something like that, I love a fish taco with it and a beer. So I'm bringing the top end in the MasterChef kitchen. I've been a fan of MasterChef since as long as I can remember. It's always been that pinnacle level of home cooking. And watching Manoli last series was definitely inspiring for me. Seeing another Territorian come down and have a red hot crack at it is just, yeah, it certainly fired me up. Get out of whip, mate. Oh, hell yeah. Shallots, bloody hell. Oh. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you? Good, how, good. Are you? how are you? Good. There's some big flavors going on here and some yes. lamb. What are you making? Yes, yeah, so I'm making, it's uh, inspired by lal mas, which is a Rajasthani dish. You know, normally I'm living in India and spending most of my time there. How many restaurants did you actually end up opening there? Three. Three. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. I learned how to cook this, you know, with locals there, but I wanted to really highlight Australian produce, so I've got the lamb. I'm going to smoke the gravy. Right. It's basically a regal dish. Okay. So I thought, first time cooking for you guys. Regal. Something a little bit regal. I'm into <laughs> it. I'm into it, man. We're glad you're back. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Sorry, Danny. John. One question for you, mate. Yeah. How long is this white chocolate balloute going to take? <laughs> I was in season seven of MasterChef, and I think people remember me from that team challenge. What is he doing with the white chocolate? What are you doing? So I'm doing a white chocolate balloute. Do you think white chocolate works with shellfish? It does. Then I look forward to tasting it. <laughs> you can teach me something for once. I'll become your apprentice, John. What are you cooking? So I'm doing a maha blanca, which is a Filipino dessert. It's a corn and coconut pudding, basically. My strength today is making desserts, because after MasterChef, I actually started a chocolate business. But this time around, I'm going to keep away from the white chocolate balloute. It's, you know, in the past. I think dark chocolate is the in thing now. <laughs> Are you ready? First time cold no, season? I'm actually a little bit nervous. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Here we go. Do it. Head it. Ready? In case you've forgotten, time flies in this kitchen. 15 down, 75 to go. There it is. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like this rush of memory to be back. It's, I, I'm just like, Cooking at home is so relaxed and so much fun. It's, what is this? <laughs> this intensity, this experience is flooding back, not just into my memory, but into my muscles and into my cells. It's like it never left. Julie, Julie. 
Jolly home. Goodwin. Where What's are we? Uh, this is some flatbread. <laughs> What's your dish? Um, the dish is a, a Lebanese feast, so some shish to walk and fatouche and a bit of flatbread and rice. Amazing. Um, my strength is just family style, bringing people to the table. Yeah. Um, that's how I set up my cooking school, so that we all cook together, then we all come together and eat the food that we've created, and I still do that for my family yeah. almost every single day. So love it. That's what I love to do. My family will always be the most important thing in my life. Good luck. Good luck Thank you. you. And back in season one, I remember it being very, very tough to leave my family behind. The boys were in year five, year six and year seven at school. But this time around, what's changed is that my little boys are now big boys and have become a grandma. Being a mum is obviously the most important thing I've ever... <laughs> Being a mum is the most important thing I've ever done, but a little grandchild just unlocks something in your heart that you didn't know was there. Winning MasterChef was very much a formative part of my life. I have watched every season, every year, since season one and it's changed a lot. I actually came here instead of taking my oldest son to his first day of high school. So now I've got to make it worthwhile. I've got to make it worthwhile. My audition dish was a roast lamb and mash. And one of our first skills challenges was chopping onions. You think about the things that they're doing now, they're insane. MasterChef has just exploded over the years. Oh, my God. And the standard of cooking has gone through the roof. <gasps> These home cooks are coming in with skills and with techniques and with knowledge that we just didn't have 13 years ago. So I honestly don't know if my style of cooking will stand up against this new generation of cooks. They're so accomplished and they're so gifted and, and technical and capable and confident. And I feel incredibly intimidated by that. All right, let's get back in there, eh? Okay, okay, I'm freaking out now. We're back in the kitchen today. Things are flying, people are crazy. It's definitely more hectic than a commercial kitchen, which I never thought would be possible. But it's great energy, it's so much fun. Oh, my okay. age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. God, how about that? <laughs> the excitement is unbelievable. Ah, oh, I'm getting like sweat in my eyes and oh, like it's no. stinging. The favourites, it's like, they're back again. Yeah. You know, they're feeling it. They know the magic that can be created in this kitchen. Yeah. Will they be able to replicate some more of that magic again? I really think so, actually. Addo, you got olive oil? I do. Can I borrow just a splash? Oh, of course, mate. Teamwork, right? Bottle. Teamwork is dreaming. Thank you, brother. Two teams, right? Yeah. Three pens off for grabs. The steaks are massive. I think there's a bit of bragging rights on the table, especially if the fans can pull out a win of two pins. Ooh, she's smoking. Oh, what a mess Billy's making. Oh, join the club. First cook back, it literally feels like just yesterday, but I am feeling good. MasterChef has changed my life. I was a kindergarten teacher, but nowadays I get to have my own food business, a couple pop-ups, cooking classes, but I'm also full-time dad. <laughs> Before MasterChef, I didn't really kind of embrace my heritage. So <laughs> yeah, Because I grew up with a lot of negative stereotypes being Vietnamese. So my heritage was something I kind of had to hide so that I could fit in. But when I served Vietnamese food to the judges and they loved it, it really gave me the confidence to embrace my culture. Today I made a bun sale. All hail. 
The buns are our king, huh? <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> Zucchini bun kung. And tens across the board. Fantastic. Thank you. And the dish is a bum ja hanoi. I can taste your home. I love when you cook like this. Please keep doing it, mate. It's awesome. Yep. After going on MasterChef and being able to cook that kind of food and having lots of people kind of really celebrate it and be like, hey, I really like that you won MasterChef, showing Vietnamese food, it made me feel like, why wasn't I always like this? And it's really special that MasterChef gave that to me. So this time around, I'm definitely not holding back. All right, Tommy. Tommy. Yo, what up, boys? Mate, so on? good to have you uh, back in here. I'm so excited. I uh -huh. missed you guys. I honestly did. What is your dish that is your strength? I'm cooking bum mum, and because Vietnamese is my strength in this kitchen, no doubt, it is the most unapologetic Vietnamese dish you'll ever have. This stuff fermented is fish. fermented, pungent. What else has it got in there? So lemongrass, chili, prawn, crispy pork belly, rice noodles. But like I, I told my mum once that, hey, if I ever get on MasterChef and I get it cooked this, I'm going to do it. And she was like, don't do it. Right. It, they're not going to like it. It's really? too, it's too hectic. What? It's too Super much. funky? Or it's like... too funky for oh, them. Really? And I'm like, mum, trust me, I'm bringing the funk today. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Good luck, mate. Oh. Can I grab a nurse? You know what, I haven't forgotten how sharp the knives are. What I've forgotten is how shaky I get when I'm here. For my Lebanese-style food, I've got my chicken in the marinade for my shish tool. My dough is resting for my flatbread, and I'm now getting on with salad. Fatouche is just a beautiful medley of freshness. It's tomatoes and radishes. It's, it's red onions rubbed in sumac. It's got lots and lots of parsley and mint and a beautiful zesty, lemony, sumac-y dressing. I'm gonna go and get the onions. Back in season one, we weren't allowed back into the pantry. So if you forgot an ingredient back then, you were without that ingredient. So I actually feel like it's it's very luxurious to be able to go, oh, I forgot me onions. I'll just toodle back on in. Don't run on television, don't run on television. But since season one, I've gotten older, gotten greyer. So I'm not built for running. How are you going? I'm having a heart attack. Glass of wine. <laughs> Two Mel's just, just chatting in the kitchen, oh, no. shooting the breeze. It's just like home. Not a lot of stress, very <laughs> relaxing, of course. Ah, tenth time coming in here, that's OK. I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing, but it's pandemonium. I'm, like, going at a million miles an hour as well. I'm doing a dessert based on native ingredients. It's a lemon myrtle parfait with caramelised white chocolate and flavours of strawberry. My name's Montana. I'm 24 from Brisbane. You know, sometimes you want to make something that looks impressive but actually requires zero effort? Well, that's this recipe. It's a yogurt panna cotta and it actually only requires two ingredients. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a four ingredient cheesy flatbread. Let's go. I make quick sort of easy recipe videos on TikTok. So start by taking your favourite flavoured yogurt and pour it into a measuring cup. The most views I've had is a video of a spinach pasta. I think it's 8.4 million people have seen my vase, has heard my voice. They will turn your hands green, but it's totally worth it. Which is cool. That's a lot of people. I'm a massive foodie and I'm a huge fan of MasterChef. I love sort of seeing the creativity of it. I love playing the game myself. Like I love seeing when they lift the lid on, on a mystery box to sort of think of what I'd make myself. So to finally be on MasterChef is just an absolute dream come true. From watching the show, I definitely learned a lot about the building blocks of different ingredients and flavours. Montana. Hello. Hello. You're, you are right in the smack of things. I know, I was trying uh, to find the clock before and I was like, oh wait, no, there it is. In the centre. Yes. You're in the eye of the yes. storm. You are the last bench of fans and then you have all of your favourites behind you. Yes. Who's intimidating you in this all field? Everybody. All of them. Um, Billy, probably more so. Yeah. Like that season was the one that like kicked yeah. off my passion for food. She was like my idol. Billy is someone who I think I really have to thank for my passion in food. She really sparked something and, and made me see food in a different light and to understand that it can be creative and it's more than just nourishment. So to see her and to think that I need to compete against her is definitely an unnerving thought, but yeah, she really, really inspired me. I guess. My strength is probably meat and veg, to be honest. 
Um, but just fancying it up a little bit, so I'm doing a lamb shoulder with a peed puree um, and some anchovy croquettes. It feels incredible to be back in the MasterChef kitchen. The adrenaline, the buzz, and the pressure is out of this world. And it's just completely different to my life back home. After winning MasterChef and working at the Fat Duck, I moved back to Australia, where I started working again on the family dairy farm. And it's been great, especially since I've had Ada. Pop them up. I don't think I ever really thought I would end up on the farm. I think the love of cooking and the love of food has always been what I really want to do. I think it's very unlikely for a winner to come back and win again. Start! But we'll give it a go. Five minutes left and everyone panics, it'll be awesome. Max, what's the dish? I'm making crab tagliolini. Quite a lot of sophistication in the sauce. Yeah. Prawn the shells, in the crab shells, exactly. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Hi, Mel, how are you? Oh, and I'm seeing a lot of things I like here. Tell me. It's bank one. One of my favourite Vietnamese street foods. It's a dish that I've had so often, like growing up. I know what it's supposed to taste like, so I want it to be perfect. How are you feeling right now? What are you uh, cooking most of the I'm cooking seafood stew. Fantastic. It is a very Venezuelan uh, stew from the coast. Yes. Yeah. People also use it to get babies, so it's like an aphrodisiac. Ah. Yeah. So people say that it's called the mattress breakup. Okay. <laughs> I'm originally from Venezuela, so I will bring the flavor, you know, the flavor. <laughs> Mom is the best cook in the world. <laughs> I'm so happy to represent a Latin culture in the MasterChef kitchen. And I will describe the Latin spirit like me, like it's always happy and we like to be laughing all the time. That's me. <laughs> I can't believe I'm struggling to cut an onion. Girls, nerves, hey? Nerves. Nerves, 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 nerves. I'm definitely not the same cook that I was in season five. My cooking style was modern Australian. I tried to make my food look as pretty as possible and have it look very refined. But I think I was a little bit confused as a cook and I didn't understand the importance of my Portuguese heritage. Looks so it's good. Yours. Doesn't it just? Also, after leaving MasterChef, I spent a lot more time with my mum and having her teach me the food that she grew up eating. And I got to rediscover my food heritage. Christina. Hey. What are you cooking? So I'm doing a uh, bacalao brage. So it's salted cod fish, the bacalao salty. So yeah. I've soaked it in two lots of milk. I'm going to lightly confit it, then mix it with the delicious onions. It sounds like a pregnant woman came up with the dish. <laughs> it's like fish, <laughs> eggs, potatoes, okay. and olives. Like, yeah, but right. it's delicious. It screams your culture, yeah, your heritage. It's Portugal on a plate. Exactly. This dish shows off my strengths because it's a national dish of Portugal, so it's really showing what Portuguese food is all about. But because of that, that's a lot of pressure and I don't want to stuff it up. Just transferring that fish over. Get rid of as much salt as possible. I don't want to blow the judge's palates. The issue with bacalao is that normally it takes a couple of days to rehydrate it and to get rid of all of the salt, but I don't have three days. It's really important that I do this dish justice. Coming through, hot milk. Hot, hot. Hot, hot. Hot stuff coming through. We are hot and dangerous in here. 45 minutes down, 45 minutes to go! Smells good, man. It's just oil at the moment. Dulan. Hey, Joe, how are you? You've got two hits to get in this pen. Yeah. Your team's going to get a pen. Yep. It's stiff competition. 
you had a chance to look around you and no. see? Absolutely, no? absolutely not. How are you going, Maxie? You got everything? Yeah, mate. It's pretty crazy to be here cooking against the favourites and the dishes that are coming out of this kitchen right now are insane. Michael's got some, like, champagne. All right, here we go. Tommy's got pork and prawns. Dan's got barramundi. Kmart's got a whole bunch of seafood. And I've got a cabbage. <laughs> Just a cabbage. Pretty. That's a good one. My name's Harry. I'm 26 and I'm from Melbourne. I live in a share house with a bunch of my mates. I love cooking for my friends. The kitchen has always just been a space where I felt really comfortable and it's my happy place. But I don't make a, you know, a huge amount of money. As soon as my budget went down and my parents weren't paying for the groceries, meat kind of went off the table and veggies became like the main source of food that I was intaking because it's cheaper to cook with veggies. I've been spending years working on how I can take really simple veggies and turn them into something extraordinary on the plate. So I'm doing a burnt, sweet and spicy cabbage that I cook for my housemates all the time. And then I'm going to sweat down some leeks to make a leek puree, which will go around the bottom. I'm going to put a bit of sour cream in it just to get a bit, a bit of tang. And then I'm going to do some crispy shallots on the top, a few snow peas and a chili oil. That's another massive part. Through cooking this burnt cabbage dish, I want to show the judges that my culinary strength is definitely veg. Like, that's just my thing. And I hope that what I can do with those ingredients really does impress the judges today. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, that's good. We ready for a big lunch? Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> We've been prepping for this in the off-season. <laughs> we should do some lunges. Get ready for lunch. That's how you Is lunch. that lunch? Yeah. The yeah. no. lunging? Yeah, no. Manoli. Hello, Manoli. Hello. My strength is Sri Lankan cooking, so making string hoppers with an egg curry and a sambal. Alvin, your bench smells delicious. Oh, I'm making a corn laksa. It's my strength. I want to know why you said yes. I don't know, John. Come on. A moment of weakness. <laughs> a moment of weakness? <laughs> no. Are you enjoying it? You look like I you're am, having a I great am. time. It's a buzz. It's a buzz. Oh, la, la, behind. Aldo. How are you, Good, mate. What's the dish? Tortellini pasta. What's in that? So there is duck marilyn, yeah. And a ragu or? It's in a ragu sauce, yeah. And then just a parmesan crisp on top to give the classy saltiness. Fancy, on fancy. Top. Thanks, gentlemen. <laughs> is that it? Get out of here. I've had so many more questions, Elder. I'm sweating, that's why. <laughs> Leave bed dry, let me be beautiful at least. Is that one yours, Jen? Uh, yes. Yeah, I just don't want to... The wanna... one that was, I was about to reset it. I was like, that's not mine. I'm Jen, I'm a dentist, and I'm from Brisbane. Some of my friends and family might call me a little bit quirky. And, yeah, I love to have fun. I'm gonna go all the way out the back here. Hopefully, I do come across as the cheerful, happy person I think I am. So, I feel like dentistry doesn't fit my personality. I love cooking because it's a creative outlet where you transform something into something completely different and you're bringing joy, you're bringing love, you're bringing deliciousness and nobody in the world hates that. Like, everyone loves food. I haven't met anyone who hates food, whereas most people hate dentists. <laughs> hey, Jen. Hello. What are you making? I'm making Taiwanese beef noodle soup. Amazing. Hong Xiang Yu Rumian. Yeah, it's like... yeah one of the quintessential Taiwanese yes, dishes. It is. So you're using shin, what do you what, what I'm actually not using shin. I'm using oxtail and beef tea today because okay. they're my two preferred cups for yeah, this. Fantastic. I like it quite gelatinous and rich. This dish is going to show my strength of packing flavour because the oxtail and beef cheek would have melted into this rich collagenous fatty <laughs> broth and Sashi is a big inspiration for me because his style of cooking is what I aspire to do and taking on ideas from authentic traditional food but putting his own little personal spin on it. It's always good to be with the younger, fresh ones so I can get their energy <laughs> working. <laughs> Back in my season, I create history by having two immunity pins at one go. They used to call me the bling boy. 
Less is what? Less is more. Shout it at me. Less is more. Louder. Less is more. I can't hear you. Less is more. Let's go. Start yeah. testing. Look at this, baby. Oh, thank you. Well deserved. Happy with you. My strength is all about getting inspiration from Asian-inspired dishes. I was doing that in season 10, and I'm doing that now in my restaurant, and I'm going to continue doing that. That is my strength. We've never been more excited about a tasting. You've only got 30 minutes to go. Ah! Nice. You said 30, right? You can do it, Julie. Oh, my God. It's smelling amazing. <laughs> it smells like despair, John. Yeah, how good is this rush? It's good, eh? You know what the best thing is? <laughs> There's a buyer, you're the first to say it. Oh, you. <laughs> for my territory tacos, my mango sauce is done, my flour tortilla is resting, and now it's time for me to start frying up my tempura fish. I've, I've battered my fish in my tempura and I've put it in the oil, and I noticed straight away that it's not crisping up and bubbling and going crazy. I'm just not really sure what's going on. I'm worried, like, this is the main part of my taco right now, and talk about first impressions. If this isn't good, then it's just gonna throw the whole thing off. You going all right? Dan? Sorry? How are you going? Struggling a little bit here, I don't really know. I'm thinking the oil isn't quite hot enough, so I'm gonna let the oil heat back up to a temperature where it's gonna be quite hot, and then I'll try again. I'm really feeling the pressure for the first time in this kitchen. You watch it on TV and you go, oh, like, it's just cooking, but this is so different to cooking at home. I still haven't gotten over the fact that Julie Goodwin and Sashi, Billy, and all these favorites that I've watched before are just cooking behind me. I can smell the fish. You can smell it, can't you? I closed the lid as well, Sashi. Oh, no, I'm glad you told me you're doing a funky dish. I might have thought it was me. I'm making boom mum, and it's not a dish you would normally see in your standard kind of Vietnamese restaurant. It's just so full on that because there's two types of fermented fish, people would be scared of it. The broth is tasting so good and it's the perfect amount of funk and I'm really, really happy. And my pork belly is in the oven waiting to crisp up. But I notice that there's no light on in the oven. What? What's going on? My oven wasn't on. Oh. I must have turned off the oven when I adjusted the temperature. I'm trying something so full on that I need every single element. If I don't have this crispy pork belly, it might just ruin my balance and then I won't have a chance of getting the immunity thing. Um, the, the oven wasn't turned on for the second half of my pork belly, which means that it's not really crisping up. I have about 15 minutes now, so I've cranked up the temperature, but I don't know how this is going to freaking work, to be honest. If I don't have a pork belly, I don't have a chance at winning immunity today. So I've just got to hope and pray that that pork belly works. So I've got my lamb in the pressure cooker. It hasn't got a whole lot longer to go. Uh, I'm just frying off the croquettes. Sauce is finishing, and then I've just got a plate. I think I'm cutting it pretty fine for time. Um, I'll be right on the zero mark, I think. So, um, head down. Yikes. Where did this time go? Oh, my God, Sarah. <laughs> so, for my Lebanese-style food, I need to get the flatbread cooked, and I also need to get the chicken skewers cooked. Hopefully, what will impress the judges is the flavour that I bring and just the nature of the food. I don't think it'll be that it's massive technical skill, so I'm quite nervous about what they're going to say. Yeah, I'll, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm ravenous. Run at me 24 dishes. Run at me. Come at me. It's transferring that fish over. Oh, that's really salty. I think the salted cod is still too salty. Oh, yes. I just won't put salt on anything else. To offset the saltiness in the fish, I'm not going to salt any other element in this dish. So then hopefully it balances everything out. Doing justice to the dish is in the forefront of my mind, followed closely by getting that pen. You have Time 
time, it just flies. <laughs> it's stressing, it's stressing, it's stressing. I have to push. I have to do it. Uh, ah. That cabbage looks delicious. You've got two hits to get in your open. You've got that rogue pin that could go to either team. Yeah. How much do you want it? So bad. Good luck. I've put the cabbage into the center of the leek and white pepper puree. The chili oil's on the side and finished off with those salty, crispy bits of leek. It's simple, but I think it's a beautiful dish. And hopefully it's gonna be enough for the pin. Yeah, this is like cooking in the NT made it sound hot. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh my gosh. The clock is ticking away and it's time to release my pressure cooker. Food and cooking is definitely a lot more creative than dentistry. And this is my version of a traditional Taiwanese beef noodle soup. We got fans, favourites, pins and trophies. You guys have got three minutes. Woo! Woo! For my territory tacos, I've got some fish cooked, but I'm not happy. It's just still not as crispy as I would like it. Don't stress. I've got to really push through and hustle now because I'm starting to really run out of time. Cooking my flour tortillas, they're getting a beautiful colour on the outside, but I bite into one and it's like a bit too floury. I feel real worried now. I'm like, oh my god, I don't really need this right now. Final touches, everyone. You've only got one minute to go. We're in the final minute. Stress is ridiculous. Pork belly. I've taken it out and. Perfect. Ooh, Tommy's calling perfect. Ooh. Oh, someone up there loves me. Oh, oh, what a waste. My mum told me never to cook boom mum on MasterChef because it's too crazy, but I really, really hope that the judges' palates can handle this dish. I don't want to keep thinking I've forgotten something. It's a little bit like that, isn't it? Ready, on board? You got ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Ah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> Look at me, I'm perspiring. <laughs> I'm a bit rusty. I don't have that, that speed that I used to have, but there are some amazing dishes I can see out here. So, hope I can uh, get a pin. Um, first cook was insane. It was really cool to cook with the favourites. I'm happy with the balance of flavours in my lemon myrtle parfait and Davidson plum and strawberry sorbet. Definitely want to show the judges what I've learned from watching the show. But yeah, it was just such an awesome opportunity to, to have the first cook here. We've got a feeling this is going to be a bloody good tasting. The first issue we want to taste been looking forward to saying this. Belongs to... Julie Goodman! <laughs> it's been 13 years since I've been on MasterChef. And right now, this feeling of fear washes over me because I honestly don't know if my style of cooking will be enough. Wow. And I feel an intense pressure to do well, having won the first season all those years ago. Julie, what are you cooked? The first issue we want to taste belongs to Julie Goodman! <laughs> Not Julie. Julie, 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 Julie. Okay, Julie. What are your matters? Um. <laughs> Well, it's a uh, uh, Lebanese food, so it's shish to wook. With um, some flatbread and a bit of fatouche and some rice. And some tum as well. Did you love the cook? I loved it and I felt that fantastic adrenaline rush. But also those nerves, man, they just came back like, 
like no time had passed at all. I reckon we crack straight in because it yeah. looks that good. Um, Julie, you're a competent cook, clearly, right? I just want to talk about what I'm feeling from you, watching you cook today and watching you stand now. I feel that you think that because you are the OG, and you were the winner from such a, such a time ago that you feel as if you're not at a standard as the years that have come after you. Is that fair? That's absolutely true, yes. What I'm going to tell you, I need you to just let it wash through your brain, which is, you're not an OG, you're a winner. But what you are, more importantly, is a classic. Okay, and classics never get old. Classics are very hard to beat. And time and time again, the classics rise to the top. From a technical mm. standpoint, everything was beautiful. The shish chow, beautifully spiced, you know, the perfume of the sumac, that little bit of sort of sourness that it brings. It was succulent, it was smoky, it was everything it should have been. The bread was soft and pliable and such a joy just to pull the chicken off the skewer into the bread. Apply liberal amounts of that beautiful garlicky root to them. Everything had a place. Like, look at us. We're like a tight little family huddling around the dinner table fighting for the last skewer. When we came to your bench, and you're like, I bring people together. You can taste it in every single bite of every single element on the platter. Julie, you have every bet as much chance of your name in that trophy again. And with food that tastes that good and looks that good, I'm banking on it. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. You're the reason why we're all here. Oh, so oh, much rip the band-aid off. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> it doesn't matter what I give her, I'm here, but that's okay. That's all good. It's all right. <laughs> okay. Montana, let's go. I'm the first fan to be tasted, and it's definitely intimidating. I've watched tastings on MasterChef for many, many years, and now I'm here, so it's definitely surreal and I really hope that the judges like my dish. Montana, what yes. are you cooked? So it is a lemon myrtle parfait with um, strawberry, caramelised white chocolate, macadamia, and some native flavours. How old were you in 2009 when Julie first lifted that thing oh above God. her head? Oh, God. Grade seven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jules, I'm trying to make her feel young, not the other way. Great, Sandy, you're going great. <laughs> the first season that I really started becoming obsessed with food was Billy's season. And from there, it really escalated into a massive passion of mine. Oh, so nice. That's sweet. 
so nice. I'm really, really serious. You can tell that you're a huge MasterChef fan because the cake, fantastic. The texture of the parfait is beautiful. Gorgeous, it's silky, it's rich, it's decadent. It is highlighted by the lemon myrtle, not overpowered by it. That feels pinworthy to me. The most impressive thing here is the balance of flavor. Hitting the bright notes from the Davidson plum and uh, strawberry sorbet versus the strawberry gum that's in there as well. It all gets kind of calmed down with a slight floral note of the lemon myrtle parfait. This goes to show that if you watch a lot of MasterChef, lots of really good things can happen because that was a really inspired place of food. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. Well done, Montana. Next up, Billy! Oh, Billy! Lamb shoulder with anchovy, croquettes, and a pea and horseradish puree. How does it feel to have Montana say, your reason yeah. she's standing there? Pretty bloody special. You sort of have to pinch yourself about it. Lamb shoulder, I thought it was going to be super he heavy. Actually, it wasn't heavy at all because the horseradish in your puree and the anchovy croquettes just lifted it up. There's a reason why you've picked up that trophy before, Billy. Well done. Thanks, John. Thank you. Alvin <laughs> Prawn curry laksa. Long time between dishes up in the judging table, mate. Yes, it's really bizarre. Like, I'm all sorts of confused at the moment. Were you expecting Gary, Matt and George? Well, well yeah, it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> George, you've changed. Oh, hey! <laughs> well, if this is you in a bowl, then you are sweet, salty, a little bit sour, a bit funky, and extremely generous. Great song, Mel. Hello, Cyril, let's have it. I have made a dish inspired by lull mass, served with Australian lamb backstrap. I'll start with the sauce. Like, that's a 10. It's so well balanced. The pickled mustard seeds I really love, because it is really rich, that gravy. So a nice little pop to that, both for texture and acidity. That was, like, just insane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sashi! <laughs> wow. Um, wow. This is a Pranakan inspired dish. What I have created is steamed fish sandwich with chili jam, pickle, shallot, some coconut rice, and also a bit of coconut dressing. Push your hand up if you're a fan of sashis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble today. <laughs> this lives up to everything that I was expecting from you and some. Your fish, that is not easy to do. That little mince yes. filling inside the sandwich, to get that just set like you have is unbelievably skillful. <laughs> You're not just back. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> well done, mate. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Next up. It's Jen. I left my stable job as a dentist to pursue my passion for food because I am quite a creative person. So I really hope my dish can show that I do belong here in the MasterChef kitchen. OK, Jen, what have you cooked? Um, I've made Hong San Yoro Mian which is Taiwanese beef noodle soup, but um, Jen's version, so it's a little bit unconventional. I don't think I've ever seen people use oxtail of beef cheek, but I really like those two cuts. Classically beef shin, of Yes, course. usually yeah. it's beef shin. Um, Why do you like those two cuts? Well, they're really gelatinous, they're very rich and fatty, and 
I love that the collagen melts into this gooey, thick mess and that becomes part of the brand. Yeah. I think you're definitely speaking our language. <laughs> It is insanely tasty. It's unbelievable. Everything you said about the richness from the collagen and the way that it coats your mouth and just hangs around, that is like goosebump stuff. And with food like that, man, this is where you belong, right here. There is so much flavour generated. The nuance and balance of spice is incredible. And with the cuts of meat that aren't a particularly authentic touch, are inherently authentic to you. And for that, we are very grateful. Thank you so well much. Well done, Jen. Nice one, Jen. All the way from the Territory, it's Daniel. After the first cook, I'm kind of spewing. This is your first impression, not only to the judges, but I want to try and impress my team and show them what I can do. And it really sucks that I'm actually not that happy with what I've produced today. And I'm pretty worried about how this is going to go. Um, alrighty. Run us through the territory tacos. So it starts off with a boring uh, flour tortilla, but then it steps so it up really a bit. You're really selling it. Yeah. have <laughs> wow. got to start off small and go okay. up. So um, from there, then we've got a mango salsa, um, and then we've got a barramundi with kaffir lime tempura, and then a sriracha mayo sauce on top. Amazing. I'm into it, man. I'm into it. So let's go through from bottom to top. You didn't really sell me on the on the flour tortilla, let's <laughs> face it. Yeah. Um, and it is a bit floury. Yeah. Mango salsa, there's some good stuff there. For me, it just needs more lime juice. You know, I want my cheeks to like really crinkle in because yeah, it's right really right. acidic versus the sweetness of that mango. Yeah. Um, your tempura, I think your ratios are out because it's not super crisp. There's good stuff here, but there's a lot to work on. Yeah. yeah. This is the place to do it. Tacos are a fun thing. You're a fun guy. You're using ingredients that you know and you are proud of, you know, when it comes to produce of the Northern Territory. So I, I love where you're starting. Thanks very much. Cheers. Well, for the next few weeks, you're going to learn tips, tricks. You're going to learn from people around you. You're going to research at night. And then all of a sudden, you'll come in this kitchen, you'll cook a dish and go, I made that. Right? It'll happen one day. Yeah. <laughs> You're right at the beginning of a path. It's so exciting. Yeah. And I'm excited to be on it with you, mate. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. I'm pretty chuffed, even though I didn't do too well. You know, I've lost my chance at immunity, but they can see where I could potentially go. Next up, it's Chris. Thank you, one, which is steamed rice noodle rolls with a pork, prawn, and black fungus filling. And uh, nook jam. You have given us perfect noodles. I think you can do better with your nokjam. Don't be afraid to just put your foot on the gas and really give it some extra. John. So what I've got for you is Mar Blanca. So it's my take on the Filipino dish. Bucket loads of technique. Meriglade's fantastic. All the flavors were nice, they were just muted. Yeah. So even if you had to dial back on the skills just to amp up the flavor, do that, because flavour trumps every time. Thank you. Well done, Thanks, John. Thank you. Hold on. We're the show. Huh? Porcini mushroom and duck ragu tortellini. 
If you were cooking this at home, would it be Napoleon style, tossed off together? Together three. Grated cheese on top. Tossed through, grated cheese on top. Pasta works fantastic, um, beautiful al dente. There's nothing wrong with it, but I want to see what you would do, not what you think we would want to see. I will. I will take it on board, for yeah. sure. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Aldo. Well mate. Thank you, guys. The next dish we'd like to taste belongs to Harry. There's three immunity pins up for grabs, and that's massive. I'm really nervous about bringing my dish to the judges because it's such a simple dish and my chances of winning one of those pins, it's all riding on cabbage. OK, Harry, please explain this intriguing plate of food. So I've made for you uh, a burnt cabbage. On the bottom, there's uh, a leek kind of puree sauce. Uh, there's a few snow peas, some crispy leeks, a chilli oil, and then I also smack it with uh, black vinegar at the end. I'm 26. Like, I don't have a lot of money to play with when it comes to food, so um, cooking veggies is easy and I can make stuff that tastes really good without having to, like, spend a whole bunch. And often it's just cooking whatever's in the fridge. You said you learned to cook like this because you didn't have, you know, a, a lot of money to work with. With dishes like that, you may have a quarter of a million dollars to work with. <laughs> wow. So that was perfect. <laughs> that is like flat out, just belongs in a really awesome, amazing restaurant. It's got richness, but then it's also got, because you smacked it with the black vinegar, it's powerful. That chilli oil is crunchy, it's crispy, it's umami. It's all of the things that you look for. It's very talented cooking. From 26-year-old, let's just walk through those doors for the first time. You don't want to start any other place than right there. And it could very, very much get you one of those pins. Thank you. Thanks. There are dishes that bring you back to restaurants. That's one of those. That it's called a signature dish. The cabbage has got great caramelization. The puree was silky, it was creamy. It's that I've got no faults, nothing. It's right up there, so um, no more words. Thank you. They're very bringing it on, don't they? Bit of deja vu, because it's time for a bit of Tommy time. Come on, Tommy. Yeah. Boom Mum is raw, it's pungent, it's funky, it's got so much going on. And it's not a dish you would normally see in your standard kind of Vietnamese restaurant. So I hope my risk pays off. On the funk scale, yep. 10 being like mum telling you the uh, boon mum's too much. Yep. Where's this? This is 100 on the funk scale. Really? What have you cooked? Uh, today I've cooked Boom Mam, which is a super funky, unapologetic, unedited Vietnamese dish. And I just, I didn't hold back.
This is truly phenomenal food. Truly phenomenal. <laughs> I would. You can smell this dish coming at you and this is testament to the fact that when you don't hold back in who you are, you will be celebrated. It was perfectly cooked, crispy pork belly, super succulent, the perfect sidekick for the funky broth. The prawns just set, again, perfect. Fresh herbs, silky, slippery noodles that were perfect. And then the broth, that raw sculling. <laughs> but it's, it's just perfection, mate. If that's what you're gonna do in day one, mate, <laughs> pen? Very, 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 very maybe today, mate. Well done, buddy. Okay, oh, thank you so much, guys. Yes, Tommy! <laughs> Next up. Manoli. <laughs> String hoppers with coconut gravy, eggs. Had I not been wearing a three-piece suit, I would have just got my hand and went like that and just <laughs> shoved it in my face. Great dish. Well done. Thank you. Ooh. Michael. Cold trout with uh, champagne and vegemite sauce. This dish is really, really fantastic, and I would order it in a restaurant for sure. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for that. Well done, mate. Come on, Michael. Mindy. I've made you a beautiful native curry. Seafood beautifully cooked. I'm loving the flavours, and if this is the first of many, I can't wait to see what's next. Well done, Mindy. Thanks. Mindy. I never want to cook against her. I never want to cook against her. She's terrifyingly good. Well Next up, Max. Yeah! Crab tagliolini. How did it feel with like 12 legends of the kitchen are staring at the back of your head? I know there's some really stiff competition, but knowing who was behind me was only inspiration for the cook today. Great pasta, nicely cooked. The crab is perfect. Well done, Max. Thank you so much. Woo! Take it away, chef. Go, chef. Chocolate and Earl Grey cake. Flavour-wise, it's delicious. You just come in and just, like, shot out everything that you possibly can at us. <laughs> there you go. This is me. I'm the cake girl. I'm on step. On step. Woo! Yeah, strong. They're bringing it. <laughs> K-Mar! With the, with the chalmer. <laughs> yeah! Seafood stew? The seafood cooking is, is perfect. And then the broth, it was rich, it was sweet. It was really delicious to eat. Well done. Thank nice you work, so much. Woo! Well done. What have you cooked, mate? So I made you guys some crab curry. Oh, yeah. Favourites? I'd watch out. These fans are here to win, I'm telling you. This is unbelievably delicious. Well done, mate. Next up, Fitz Christina! Oh, there it is. It means so much to me for the judges to like this. This is the first opportunity that I have to cook Portuguese food. I don't know if they're going to get it. She's not pretty. So I'm, I'm really worried. Christina, what have you cooked us? Um, I cooked bacalao brash. So it's salted codfish uh, with potatoes, uh, onions, um, and eggs. And then it's, I don't know why I'm tearing up. It's just, it's, you know, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it, this is a dish that means something to you. Talk to me about that. Oh, it's just, and Portuguese food is yeah. very underrated. Um, and a lot of people in Australia, you know, they hear Portuguese food and they think tarts and chicken. Um, and it's <laughs> so much more than that. Um, 
And so that's that's Portugal on a plate. All right, let's eat it. You've just taken such a huge step forward in, in your cooking career, I feel, with this dish. Really? It looks so simple, but it's, it's so complex. And you're like, you're walking such a tightrope with those flavours. It's like salt cod, olives, like they're, they're big players, but treating the salt cod how you had, by knowing that it was salty, soaking it in your milk, getting rid of some of that salt, caramelising slowly those brown onions. It's like, that is heaven. It is unbelievable, Christina. It's such a simple premise, but in the right hands, it's thousands of years of history. And the way you've treated it here, it's silky, it's decadent. You've balanced everything beautifully. It's a clear demonstration of knowledge and technique. Thank you. It is done so expertly. It has blown me away. I'm, I'm so happy for you. You've, you pulled this on day one because that confidence could be enough to drive you through to pick up that trophy. Well done. Thank you. judges to get it and then to love it. I feel seen. I feel like I've done my culture proud. Um, oh, God, I'm it means a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We ask all of you to show us your strengths and man, you did that and more, so well done. Right, down to business. We've got three pins to give away. One for the best dish of the favourites. One for the best dish of the fans. And of course, one for the next best dish, which could be either of you. So, without further ado, the winner of the favourites pin is Tommy. Thank you so much. Thank you, mate. Thank you, thank you. 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 Winner of the fans pen is Harry. The burning question is, which contestant created the next best dish? There were so many to choose from, but we have. And the next best dish belonged to a favourite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was cooked by Christina. What? We 
are so pumped from what we've seen today. We can't wait to see what you do this season. Trust us, it's going to be a big one. Get out of here. See you guys. Well done, everybody. Year. Are you ready for this? Yes, Chef! <laughs> Master Chef takes team competition. This is definitely David versus Goliath. To a whole new level. We're not going to come in against the favourites without a game plan, mate. Let's go, fans. Bring it on. With never before seen challenges. Oh my God. <laughs> inspired by amazing locations and superstar guest chefs. Go, Stone! Oh. Please welcome Marco Pierre-White! Come closer. The pressure will intensify. Oh, oh my God! With eliminations that will shock everyone. Come and sit down and talk to me. <laughs> but through it all... These guys have got my back. Their friendship <laughs> and determination. Oh my God. <laughs> is the recipe for success. Mouth-wateringly delicious. It really is first class. This is flawless food. Each bite is like a little different explosion. Will history repeat? The flavour was epic. That's a competition-winning dish. Or will it be rewritten? The winner of MasterChef Fans vs Favourites 